In this video, we'll learn about modeling the diode. We've already seen two models for the diode. We've talked about its ideal IV characteristics. This is what we can call an ideal diode model, where we see zero current flowing when the diode's reverse biased and zero forward voltage, voltage drop when it's forward biased. The true IV characteristic is shown over here. It differs from the ideal IV characteristic, importantly, in the fact that a finite forward voltage drop does develop when current starts flowing in the forward direction through the diode. And that forward voltage drop is a weak function of the total current flowing. There's also operation in reverse breakdown, not captured by the ideal IV characteristic. So the ideal IV characteristic is good for approximate analysis and for building intuition, but it's not very good for providing accurate values. The true IV characteristic, on the other hand, provides high accuracy. However, it can be cumbersome, as we'll see, to perform hand calculations. Let's consider the analysis of this simple diode circuit shown here, consisting of a voltage source with a value VDD and then a series combination of resistor R and diode. We're interested in the voltage across the diode and the current flowing in this loop. Now, to find the two unknown variables ID and VD, we need a couple of equations. One is simply given by Ohm's law, which must be satisfied by the voltage and current in the resistor R. And that's expressed here. The second relationship is the IV characteristic of the diode, shown here. We've neglected the term minus one because, in fact, uh, we should be able to see here that with any reasonably large value of VDD, the diode will certainly be forward biased. So we're justified in using this approximation shown here. So to find the values of ID and VD, we have to solve these two equations simultaneously for ID and VD. This would be straightforward, except that the diode's equation is nonlinear. So one way to solve it is graphically. We can simply plot the VI characteristic of each of these devices, of each of these equations, on the same axes. The relationship that governs the voltage and current through the resistor R is represented by the straight line here, often called the load line. The exponential relationship of the diode, on the other hand, is plotted here. The intersection between them is the only place where the values of current and voltage simultaneously satisfy both equations. So that must be the operating point of the actual circuit. Computer simulators can be very good at helping us make these calculations and finding operating points quickly. However, it's quite cumbersome to do it with hand calculations. One way is that you can assume an approximate value for VDD and ID, and then iteratively bounce back and forth between these two expressions until you arrive at the operating point values, Q. However, a very useful model for doing hand calculations of diode circuits is one that compromises between the simplicity of the ideal diode model and the accuracy of the true IV characteristic, the exponential relationship shown at the bottom. It's called the constant voltage drop model. It simply assumes that the voltage drop across the diode when it's forward biased and current is flowing is constant at a value 0 0.7. 0 0.7 is a reasonable forward voltage drop to assume for silicon diodes. The value may be different for diodes made out of different materials. And that's because the IV characteristic in the accurate exponential model rises so steeply that as we've seen, 
over a couple decades variation in current, we only expect the forward voltage to vary by about plus minus 50 or 60 millivolts at room temperature. So the error we incur by just assuming this is a constant at 0.7 is relatively small. So according to this constant voltage drop model, it's again, like the ideal diode model, it's piecewise linear. There's one model for when we're reverse biased. That's this part of the curve here. In this region, the constant voltage drop model tells us that zero current is flowing, in which case it can be modeled by just assuming it's an open circuit. The other situation is forward biased. Here we assume that any current may flow in the forward direction. Well, a voltage drop constant at 0 0.7 volts is maintained. This is precisely, in this portion of the curve, the IV characteristic offered by an ideal voltage source, as shown over here. So when we're reverse bias, we can replace the diode with an open circuit and perform the analysis. And when we're forward biased, we replace it with an ideal voltage source with a value of 0 0.7 volts and perform the analysis. If we're presented with a problem and we're not sure which operating mode the diode is in, we can always just pick one of these two, perform the analysis, and see if a contradiction arises. If not, if the resulting analysis produces a consistent set of voltages and current consistent with our assumption, then that's a valid operating point of the circuit. Let's return to the example that we considered earlier with a voltage source VDD connected to the series combination of a resistor and a diode. And let's use the constant voltage drop model to analyze it. Intuitively, with a value of VDD equals five volts, we would expect the diode to be forward biased. Now, again, even if we made a wrong assumption here, the resulting analysis would give a result that's inconsistent with our assumption, and we would eventually realize that the diode must be forward biased. But recognizing that, we can replace the diode with its constant voltage drop model, that is, with a DC source with a value of 0 0.7 volts. Having replaced the diode with its model, we can complete the rest of the circuit. The resistor value is given 1K in this case. And VDD is 5 volts in this case. So we've therefore got a voltage drop of 4.3 volts arising across the resistor, the resistor value being one kilo ohm, that implies a current of 4.3 milliamps. It's interesting to compare that with the result that would be obtained by using, let's say, a graphical analysis and the ideal, or the, sorry, the exact voltage current relationship of the diode. Using that exponential relationship, we could calculate that the drain current is closer to 4.262 milliamps and the forward voltage drop 0 0.738 volts. So you see there is some error incurred by using the constant voltage drop model, but considering how easy it makes the calculation, it gives us a very good approximation. The difference between 4.3 milliamps and 4.26 milliamps being only about 1%.